Alexa, turn on the bedroom lamp. Okay. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Overworked Logic tutorial. Today, we're going to be showing you how to get started with the Alexa module. Before we start any of the programming, it's important that you verify that your firmware on your 3 series processor is above the version shown on the screen now. So let's get started with the registration process. So what you're going to do is expand the Crestron modules folder under the symbol library, and then you'll see that there's an Alexa folder right there ready for us. Just click and drag the Alexa registration module over to the detail view. Comment out all of these symbols, except for the registration code and the registration ID. And instead of making a giant X panel for everything, we're just gonna register using the simple debugger and toolbox. So even though it's bad practice and these signals are unconnected, we're gonna compile and upload this to our processor. And once that finishes, I'll show you what the next steps are inside of toolbox. So once your program has finished uploading, the first thing you're going to do is open up your toolbox, open the simple debugger tool, connect to your RMC, and then make sure that you're getting the two signals that we added from the registration module and simple. The other thing that you're going to do is open up your browser of choice and navigate it to the link shown on the screen. And in the middle of that page, you're going to see a text box for the control system ID. And the control system ID is literally just your processor's MAC address which you can get from the output of the registration module that we added earlier. So you'll just take the MAC address and type it in character for character in the control system ID. And then you'll hit submit. So when you do this for the first time for any processor, nothing's gonna be connected and linked. So you'll go down to the register button down here and that'll give you a six digit pin that you can enter right here. So you'll take that pin, copy it, and then you'll open up the registration code symbol inside a toolbox, and you'll just paste that inside of here. Hit send. So you won't notice any feedback inside of simple debugger, but after a little while, these X's should turn green. Okay, good. So we're registered and connected, and the last step for the registration process is to link everything to Amazon. So you'll just click the link button down here, type in your super secret password, and once you do that, you get your three green check marks, which means that we have completed the first phase of the registration process. So using the same browser window from before, just jump over to the URL shown on the screen, log in with your super secret password again, and I'll go ahead and make this full screen. You're gonna navigate over to the skills area, and you're gonna search all skills for the Crestron skill. And there's two, we're going to add both of them. So you'll enable the skill, and then you'll have to link it to your account. It's just another step, it's really easy. So the first one's enabled and linked, and we'll go back and grab the second one, enable that skill, and then go ahead and link it. All right, and after you link the second skill, you'll get a pop-up like this saying that it needs to discover devices, but we haven't programmed our system yet, so if we did that, it wouldn't discover anything. So just go ahead and dismiss this for now, and we can bring it up later. Now all we need to do is the simple programming. All right, so to move on to the programming portion, you literally just bring an Alexa room module over to the detail view, and then from here, you do all the programming that you need. So first off, what is this thing doing? The Alexa room module is assuming that you've got a bunch of devices inside a particular room in a house. And a device could be a lighting load, it could be a shade, it could be a thermostat, or it could be something like a TV or a switcher or an amp or something like that. But the idea is that you use one of these room modules in every room in the house where you're doing the programming. And what's actually kind of neat about these is you specify a room name here. So this would, for instance, be our living room. And then you've got all of these parameters to describe the different types of devices that you have in that room. So for instance, you can name each of the lights in the room. You can name the shades. You can name your generic devices. And these names correspond to the voice commands that you'll say to activate these devices. But for this video, we're just going to assume that in this particular room, in the living room, we have three lights. And those lights are going to be named fireplace lights, 
couch light, and mood light. So under each of the loads that we've specified, we've got these two Boolean parameters that we can change. On off is pretty self-explanatory. It allows the Alexa module to either send an on or off command to it. And then the levels parameter allows you to specify analog values to manually set these devices at. So those would come out of these analog lines here. And we're gonna leave these true for all the things that we have. And we're also going to enable this parameter called Enable Room Light. And this parameter allows you to treat all of the lights in this room as a single unit. So for instance, if I wanted to turn all of the lights on at the same time, instead of saying, Alexa, turn on the fireplace, Alexa, turn on the couch, Alexa, turn on the mood light, I would just say, Alexa, turn on the living room lights. And then all of these individual lights would turn on simultaneously. Okay, so now that we've got a room name, now that we've got some loads named, let's go ahead and actually do some programming. So all of the loads that we've named so far are lights, which means that all of the controls are gonna come from the light loads dropdown. And the first thing that we're going to do is capture commands for the individual loads. But instead of using the names for these, I'm just gonna use numbers just to make copy paste ability a little bit easier. So these outputs from the Alexa module are telling our lights to go on or off. So I'm going to make a new subfolder under the logic folder. And I'm going to add an analog initialize to it. Our on and offs are going to drive the inputs of this initialize. On is going to set our lights to 100% and off obviously to 0%. And we're gonna take the output of this and give it a name different from the name here. We're actually gonna give this light one level unlimited. And just to make our feedback look nice, we're going to add an analog rate limiter with a three second ramp time. And that's going to smooth out the transitions on these lights. And then you can see I'm taking the output of the rate limiter and providing it as feedback for the Alexa module. Okay, cool. So let's walk through what's happening here real quick. So in our Alexa room, we've named it the living room. We've got the fireplace light defined. So if we say, Alexa, turn on the living room fireplace light, this light on output will be pulsed, which will set our analog initialized to 100%, which will pass through our rate limiter. And depending on what slewing is going on, we'll see that light one level ramp slowly up to the 100% value from whatever it was before. And then similar things happen with the light one off and the light one level. And actually what we're going to do here is change this to light one level unlimited. Otherwise, if we specify a certain lighting level, it'll cause erratic jumps in our program and we don't want that. And for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to assume that the other lights in this room are going to behave the same way. So we're just going to copy these signals and paste them to lights two and three. Change the ones to twos, change these ones to threes, and likewise for the feedback. And since we're using the same signals and the same logic, let's just go ahead and copy and paste special the logic for light one, for lights two and three. All right, awesome. So we're controlling all of our lights individually. Now we want to add feedback and controls for the room light controls. Recall that the room light is going to set all of these lights to the same level simultaneously, but we've still got to add programming to make it do that. So I'm going to add a new folder under the logic folder. The only difference is that the analog initialize is going to set all of these analog values at the same time. So we'll give these some signal names. And we'll open our initialize. Close these two, because we don't need them. Room light on, room light off. Here we go. Our room light on is going to set everything to 100% and off to 0%. And then the output of our analog initialize, we're gonna give the name room light level. 
So to make sure that all of these analog values are influenced by room light level, we're going to add an analog buffer, give it an enable line of 1, and we're going to use the room light level three times, and we're going to use that to set the unlimited levels of our individual lights. But before we can compile and upload, we have to comment out every signal that we're not using on the Alexa room module. So I'll just hit Control I. Oh, and I almost forgot. We want to be able to see what these light load statuses are on our X panel. So I'm going to open up the X panel, go over to the analog side, and we're going to look at our light levels on analog feedbacks one, two, and three. Oops, three. All right, so now we'll save, compile, and upload. And once that finishes, we should be able to receive voice commands from Alexa and have it actually control our Crystron system. So there's one more small step that we have to do before we can use these cool features that we've added. Alexa, discover devices. Starting discovery. This can take up to 20 seconds. If you have Philips Hue, press the button on your bridge. So Alexa is manually going through the network and looking for all of the different devices that can be controlled from the Alexa API. Discovery is complete. I found four smart home devices. If your Philips bulbs were not discovered, please press the button on the bridge and rerun Discovery. All right, so now that we've actually found our devices, we can test. Alexa, turn on the living room lights. Okay. And just like we expect, all three light levels go up at the same time because we are using the room light command to make that happen. Alexa, set the fireplace lights to 50%. Okay. Alexa, set the couch lights to 15%. Okay. Alexa, turn off the mood lights. Okay. So as you can see, we have individual control of every lighting load that we defined in the Alexa Room module. And if we wanted, we could set all of these light loads to the same level by saying something like, Alexa, set the living room lights to 75%. Okay. And all three go to the exact same percentage at the same time. So all that we've really done in this tutorial is go through the registration process and then examine some of the very basic features of the Alexa Room module. But if nothing else, we hope that you take away from this video exactly how easy it is to get Alexa running in your 3 Series processor. So thanks again everyone for watching. If this tutorial inspired you to go out and buy an Echo or an Echo Dot for your Crestron system, we would love it if you'd use the link here to purchase your stuff from Amazon. It doesn't change the price any, but it gives us a little bit of a kickback and it, it lets us know that you still love us. And from all of us here at Overworked Logic to you, have an excellent holiday and we will see you in the next video.